This is the iPhone 14, and it's actually a pretty great phone, even now over a year after it was released. Here's why you probably shouldn't buy it. So the reason I said this is a great phone is because it is in a vacuum. If no other iPhone except the 14 existed, this would be an amazing device. But since that's not the world we live in, it's hard to justify getting the iPhone 14 when there's an iPhone for practically any use case that's at least as good as this one, if not better. Starting with the most obvious one, the iPhone 13. These two phones are so similar that it's, well, first of all, almost impossible to tell them apart. They have the exact same design, build materials, display, and even the same chip, but we'll talk about performance in a few minutes. Design-wise, the only way you will be able to tell the difference between the iPhone 14 and the iPhone 13 would be the colors, if not for the US version of the 14 being eSIM only, so no SIM tray. Now don't get me wrong, I love the way both of these phones look and feel in the hand. They're both very sleek and durable with that nice matte aluminum frame and ceramic shield on the front. I love their displays as well. They look stunning. Colors are accurate and true to life. They have a good contrast ratio and the 800 nits brightness is more than good enough for me, speaking at 1200 for those bright outdoor scenarios. The only thing they lack is yeah, the 120 hertz refresh rate. Most people, in my opinion, don't really mind the 60 hertz. A lot of average users don't even know what that means or notice the difference. But it would still be a nice to have for those of us who do notice it. I understand why Apple still chooses to leave out the 120 hertz option for their standard models, because it is a pro feature. The name of the pro motion display itself does signify that it is for the pro models, sure, but 90 would be nice. Now, all that being said, I did get used to the 60 hertz on this phone pretty easily. I stopped noticing it altogether in like a few hours. Okay, so overall, they have great screens. They, as in both iPhone 14 and iPhone 13, because these two phones have the exact same display on them, like identical. I can't stress this enough, no difference, nada. No, it's the same, two phones, the same exact, like no difference. Okay, so the design is the same between the two, displays are the same. Surely there'll be a bigger difference in performance, right? Even if they do have the same chip. Apple must have done some magic to make the iPhone 14 faster and more efficient, right? No, not really. The 14 has one more GPU core than the 13, which means basically nothing. Only the Pro models last year, the iPhone 14 Pro and the 14 Pro Max, got a chip upgrade from the A15 to A16 Bionic. Again, A15 is a really fast and efficient chip, even by today's standards. I have absolutely nothing bad to say about it. It's still one of the better chips on the market. iPhone 14 can handle all everyday tasks perfectly. Gaming as well on pretty high settings, as well as basically anything else, with the exception of something like ray tracing that we saw on the 15 Pro and Pro Max. But so can the 13. There seems to be a pattern here. Battery life on the iPhone 14 is <laughs> the same as it is on the 13. Yep, both phones can easily get me through the day with moderate to heavy usage. They get around seven hours of screen on time on average, which is more than fair, especially if you consider their semi-compact form factor. And in a lot of tests I've seen so far, 13 even comes out on top in a lot of cases with around 15 to 30 minutes more of screen on time than the 14. The one aspect in which the iPhone 14 does actually win over its predecessor is the cameras, specifically the main 12 megapixel camera. It has a slightly bigger sensor with a wider aperture of f1.5 with the addition of the photographic styles for photos and action mode and cinematic mode for video. Cinematic mode does exist on the 13 as well, but it is capped at 1080p while we get the 4K 30 option on the 14. And those are all nice to have features for sure. I'm not a huge fan of cinematic mode personally, but a lot of people people do seem to enjoy it. And the action mode does come in handy in some situations. Just keep in mind it needs a lot of light to produce a satisfying result. As soon as you take that away, the video quality, even though it is stable and smooth, kind of falls apart. Other than that, both iPhone 14 and iPhone 13 produce some great photos. A lot of detail, pretty sharp without being overprocessed, great color signs, and of course, the video capabilities on both are still pretty hard to beat. Okay, this is what the iPhone 14 camera looks like with one studio light on the side. And this is what the audio sounds like coming directly from the iPhone. And while we test out the camera, I wanna mention two more features that are exclusive to the iPhone 14 and 15 series, which are emergency SOS via satellite in some regions and crash detection in some regions. But also, if you have an Apple Watch Series 8 or newer, Apple Watch SE second gen or Apple Watch Ultra, you already have those two features available. So 
even though it is a great phone. I honestly don't see any major reason to go with the iPhone 14 in 2023 when you can get the iPhone 13 for at least 100 bucks less with 99% of the same features. 14 Plus does make a bit more sense if you're looking for all these same features in a bigger form factor with a much stronger battery. On the opposite side of that, iPhone 13 mini is a great choice for someone who wants a compact flagship experience. And if you're looking for 120 Hertz, you can go with the iPhone 15 Pro, 14 Pro, or even the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max, which are, in my opinion, one of the best iPhones today for their price to performance slash features ratio. I'll leave a link to all these models in the description if you wanna check them out. And let me know how I feel about the iPhone 14 in the comments below. Like, sub, video.